Hi, I'm Jerry, and this is goal two on the faulty system range at Haiku Pro. I wanted to go a little bit deeper, give a little bit of context, and help you with this particular goal, not just achieve the flag, but also to understand and appreciate a little bit more about what's going on. So you can see we're on goal two here, and it's asking us to enumerate the web application for a vulnerability to exploit, and specifically a vulnerable framework and a template used. Now we know it's uh, the IP on port 9090 because of the first goal that we achieved. And a couple things I wanna point out right here. So first of all, work Zoog. Now if you Google that, which would be a good idea, you know it's a Python based web app somehow, you can learn a little bit more about the work Zoog web application library. Now this isn't gonna give you the answer, but it is interesting. Little, little something for you to dig in there. Now, when you go in here, it says find a way past the login form. Now, different ways to get information would include looking at the source code by right clicking and hitting view source. You can do this for any web page on the internet. And if you go through here, it's fairly pedestrian, not a lot of interesting stuff going on in here. You can also type in, you know, fake credentials. See if it gives you some type of error. Sometimes when you log in, it'll, it'll you know, do something, or maybe we don't put a password in and it, and it gives you an error. Well, it doesn't look like we're getting anything. Maybe let's just do a password, no username. We're not really getting anything, so that's not good. Now, we didn't get anything from that page source. The WorkZoog is interesting, and we did a little bit of research on that, but that's not really telling us the framework or the template used. Now, I do want to point out that in the summary, it does talk about some different learning objectives and it includes SQL injection. So for web applications that have a database backend, the database is queried through a language called SQL or SQL. And it's a very standardized query language that has very specific keywords like select, from, where, update, delete, union. And because of this very prescriptive query language, whenever you type something in the front end, it needs to be taken and built into a query that the back end database can do. And that, that's actually what middleware is uh, in web dev, which is a little bit beyond the scope of this. So with SQL injection, if you don't do input validation, right? If you don't, as a developer, make it so whenever I type something in, in here, it goes into the query well, well formed, it can cause issues. So another thing that we can do is just add a tick. Now this is literally just a tick, which is right next to the uh, enter button. If you hit shift, it'll be, uh, the tick button would be like a quote quotation. So just a tick, which is a special character in SQL that defines that you're about to pass some type of explicit value, okay? So if we do a login with just this tick, let's see what happens. It fails. This is because this application was not written well to handle an input that messes up SQL. And you can see right here, it's talking about unrecognized token. And if you scroll down through this error message, you can even specifically see where it's trying to execute select ID username from the user table in the database where username equals some value and password equals some value, passing the username and password value, okay? So this right here, this is what's in that first form field and this is what's in the second form field. But because we passed it, something it wasn't expecting, it failed and made a big error message. So now we get a little bit more information. And you can see right here in the error message, it's saying what, where it failed in the file. And remember, WorkSug is a Python-based web application framework or tool. And the Flask package is right here. So we might, it, maybe you've never heard of Flask before, and that's okay. You could then say, um, you know, WorkSug Flask. See what that brings up brings up the same page. Okay, well then let's look on the page for the word flask. Flask doesn't come up. Interesting. 
Let's do Flask in the quick search. See, sometimes you got to do the, the digging, the research, okay? There we go. Starting to talk about Flask, 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 Flask. So then let's ask what Flask is, right? What is Flask Python, right? You have some of these keywords in your, in your recon that you're going to be pulling upon. Flask is a web framework, okay, guys? It's very Pythonic, right? Meaning it's a lot like Python code. So if you've written in Python, it'll look very familiar. A web framework basically allows you to make a web application much faster because the framework handles a lot of the lower level pieces that you don't have to code yourself. You just type a little program and a lot of the uh, maintenance and setup and breakdown and structure is all handled by the framework, which is why frameworks are very popular. Okay, so now going back to the Haiku challenge, we can see, okay, what's the vulnerable framework? Well, we know it's Flask now and the template used. Now, if you look through here, templates are kind of predefined templates, <laughs> frankly, that allow you to um, use the frameworks in ways that are pretty common, right? Well, we're not going to get any more information in here about a template, but what I would say is, okay, if we know Flask and we say Flask framework template and we hit enter, you can see how to use templates in Flask. And then when we dig in here a little bit more, we begin to see in Flask, you can use the Jinja templating. Jinja, okay. Now, when you do that, you could say Flask comma Jinja, just like it says the format in the key. See the key template, it's taking a five letter word, right? and then a comma, and then another five letter word. And you might have seen Jinja too as well, but that is six. So looking at that, Flask and Jinja, and there you go, it, that works. So when you're doing enumeration of a web app, be sure to test all of the things, including the form fields, the page source, and Take what you can from an Nmap scan on fingerprinting and then use the internet, Google, Bing, search, whatever you want to use and dig in, drill in, and you can find these answers. I hope this was useful. I hope it helped you with the goal. Good luck on the next challenge.